I've been using my MX Master 3 and 3S for the past 3 years and I've loved it. Until I updated to Ventura and the Bluetooth connection just took a dive. This led me to think, what about a gaming mouse? I love using mine with the PC. Would it be any different than any other production mouse out there? Well, my name is David with Side of Tech and today we're going to be talking about why I just switched over to a gaming mouse for my Mac. Let's check it out. <laughs> So first off, my gaming mouse of choice to use with a Mac is the Logitech G502X+. Plus. The reason I chose this is because mainly I'm familiar with this mouse and I've used every single iteration it's gone through. Also it has a similar form factor to the productivity mouse I've been using lately, the MX Master 3S. The only thing missing is the horizontal scrolling wheel, which I do love from the 3S, but I've solved this problem by having a magic trackpad. So with that being said, I want to go over 5 points of why I think the gaming mouse is better than a dedicated productivity one. So the first thing is that gaming mice are usually optimized to have a super lightweight. This can lead to less fatigue when working at your desk for long periods of time. I mean, look at the Logitech Superlight at 63 grams or the Razer Viper Mini Signature at 49 grams. My mouse is at about 100 grams in weight while the MX Master 3S is almost 150 grams. You might think that 50 grams is a little difference, but it's actually much bigger than you think. Whenever I switch back to the 3S, it feels like a ton of bricks and I don't think I see myself switching back. Productivity mice like the 3S are usually bigger in size with no real consideration on weight. They mainly focus on ergonomics in hand. I'd argue weight might be a little more important than hand ergonomics, but that's just me. Lightweight is definitely the way to go. So next point is the sensor, which controls the mouse's sensitivity. Guys, bear with me, it's gonna get a little bit nerdy. On a normal magic mouse, you'll usually have a DPI or dots per inch around 1500, which is is really slow and not as responsive. Now compare that to the G502 which can get up to 25,000 dpi. That amount of range when fully dialed in can really make your experience smooth and buttery. And if you're someone like me who needs to have the sensitivity cranked up to move your hand around less, this is a great answer for it. This can reduce fatigue when you're using your mouse daily hours on end. Now the next challenge is to try using your gaming mouse at full sensitivity. Always a fun time. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about build quality. Now when I say build quality, I'm talking about how gaming mice are built with higher tolerances due to their need of lasting longer because of pro gaming. As most people know, esports is a booming industry and with this need of pro gaming peripherals, gaming mice need to be able to withstand long hours of gaming. And mouse companies understand this. This in turn helps us productivity folks because these mice are naturally built in with those specs in mind. An example of this is a much larger tolerance of clicks before failure, the smooth of PTFE feet or a more thought out scrolling wheel that doesn't sacrifice weight for having a fancy metal wheel. All of these little things create a much more pleasant experience for yourself when you're doing all these productivity tasks. Have you guys ever experienced a time where your connection starts struggling because you have your headset, mouse, keyboard, speakers, and 20 other accessories hooked up to your poor Bluetooth connection? Well, you can easily overcome this by adding a dedicated USB receiver that will create a straight connection to your Mac. So sure, Sure, we have to give up a port, but let's be honest, this instant response time is so worth it. There are some mice that use this USB receiver, but their tech isn't well developed to get that instant response time, otherwise known as latency. But here comes Logitech G, which is Logitech's gaming peripherals side. They developed a really awesome wireless tech called Lightspeed. This kind of connection can even rival wired, which is really saying something. You can really see this difference when comparing the G502 to the MX Master 3S. And I'm sorry if I'm not able to show this well on video, but me looking at this in person, it's a huge difference and really does add to your experience. This instant response time is something you don't really think about, but it's really nice to see once you start using it every single day. So the last point I want to talk about is how gaming mice are much more focused on customizability. For example, my mouse has the ability to customize 6 buttons and be whatever I need them to be like copy paste, change volume, bring up mission control, etc. With the simple magic mouse you're very limited on how many gestures you can use. The MX Master 3S is a step above but even that mouse is limited. Also most productivity mice don't even have the buttons so they're very restricted on what you can do. Not to mention all these buttons can really help with your product 
connectivity and it's really awesome when you have everything dialed in and trust me once you start using all these buttons you never want to go back so why wouldn't you want to use a gaming mouse as your main mouse? So for one, gaming mice are usually more expensive than productivity ones. Now I know you can get some cheaper gaming mice, but to really fully take advantage of all the features, you'll want to get a higher end one. Not only that, you have to think about compatibility. Logitech G is very friendly with Mac and PC, but you have other companies whose mice might not even be compatible with a Mac or come with any software at all. Another reason why you wouldn't want to switch is that a gaming mice usually takes up a port on your computer. And in a world where USB-C has become really popular, some of the USB receivers that gaming mice use only use USB type A. So for one, you might not even have a USB A port on your computer. So then you'll have to buy a dongle that'll support it, adding to the cost even more. Even with these roadblocks, I still think you should take a look at the pros and cons and weigh them out for yourself. You might find yourself in a better position in investing in this type of setup. So all in all, this is why I've switched over to a gaming mouse for my Mac. I know a lot of people use the MX Master Series as their productivity mouse of choice, so I wanted to use it as a baseline for a lot of the comparisons. You still may like your current productivity mouse, but at the end of the day, everyone has their own preferences, and this is just an example of me thinking a little outside of the box. But what did you think about this topic? Let me know your opinions down below, and let's go ahead and start a conversation. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching today's video. And I really hope you consider joining us by subscribing down below. I also really want to take this time to thank all my old subscribers, all my current subscribers. You guys are so awesome and you guys are what's keeping this channel going. So I really do appreciate all the support and having a platform here on YouTube has really just given us a space to talk everything out and just discuss everything. So that's really awesome. And I really appreciate you guys. If you guys are looking for extra content, go ahead and follow me on all my social media, especially my Instagram at side of tech. I go ahead and post a whole bunch of behind the scenes content and a whole bunch of reels, photos, and everything like that. So if you're into that, feel free to follow me on all that social media. Now, with all that being said, you guys, this was David serving you a little side of tech, and I'll see you in the next video. God bless you guys.